with regards to this panel, we're looking at resilience as the ability to bounce back from adversity. So with all the sort of um, adversity that cities have experienced with economic and natural disasters, what kinds of things are being done in the mobile and mapping fields in terms of how cities can bounce back and how we can recover and what kinds of mobile and mapping platforms help that kind of process. And people were actually mapping areas that were affected by the typhoon and tracing roads into open street maps. So this was like very much like a crowdsourced, um, people sourced effort globally that helped them direct typhoon response. They used different sorts of methods to sift through Facebook and to Twitter and those sorts of responses and then map out exactly what to do in the Philippines. RHI status, which was the Red Hook Initiative status, and it was an SMS, mobile SMS to map plugin, and I'll go to the actual map here. And basically what, is it do what it does is that people that were affected by Hurricane Sandy could text their needs, like I need a generator or I need water, and it would be mapped onto the map in Red Hook, and along with a community discussion thread where people could respond on the web to what they were seeing, which was being texted and then mapped on the map. So Land of Opportunity is an interactive, multi-layered uh, exploration of post-crisis community and rebuilding in America. So it's not just about the post-crisis, but it's also about thinking about can the tool be used during crisis and also as a preventative by building community, um, communities of practice. Comparative timeline, which as I said right now, we have uh, Katrina content and Sandy, but eventually the idea is to have many timelines and to be able to look at the four stages of post-crisis in terms of like, you know, the aftermath, recovery, and future. And it would have the same nodal content and the idea is to be able to show those uh, alignments in terms of how there are parallel type of uh, redevelopment efforts that go in that silence the voices of uh, local communities. So we're um, interested in, in, in tackling the part of the world that is communicating at, at lower levels of sophistication. Um, SMS historically has, is, a very, is the most widely used digital platform in the world. It continues to be um, ISMS every day and people in the, in the most uh, remote areas of the world are now often able to SMS as well. Um, so it's very widely distributed, and as we found out um, in Hurricane Sandy last year here in New York, it's also very resilient itself. Cell towers can withstand more trauma than um, a lot of other forms of communication wiring can. So uh, cell towers will often remain um, standing after a disaster. I've been most recently um, involved in a, a, an, a group with the World Bank called the Open Cities Project. We take for granted that you know we can pull up Google Maps and walk around the city and we know where we're going and maybe their like trip planning is like not so accurate as I've recently have discovered, but um, you know we have very we have high fidelity information. There are many parts of the world and I'm sure if you've traveled like on your um, Fulbright scholarships, there are many parts of the world that are under map um, and we could consider as blank spots on the map and and so basic planning questions um, such as where to place that school. Um, where to place that hospital. Um, there is growing initiative to um, support efforts of mapping these blank spots and using open source tools and open data um, and an international network to help build um, a fidelity of information. There is a difference between resilience and the aftermath of, of a crisis. And so um, there are two things that really uh, inspire me when we talk about resilience. One is um, diversity. I really believe that whether we're talking about like the resilience of a technological piece of software or resilience of a community or um, the resiliency to bounce back from um, a, a crisis, um, it's really important. Um, the, the questions of diversity are, are critical for answering um, uh, the creation of resilience. And so I'm very much interested in what it looks like to have more women um, in this uh, technology space. I think we're, we're building tools that need to be resilient. Um, and so having more perspectives in the room from different places, from different um, classes, gender, sexuality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, different parts of the world need to be part of that conversation. Um, otherwise, I think we set ourselves up for um, a lot of danger. You know, we map things, and I can see them on CNN in Washington, D.C., where I live, but the people who need to know where the supplies are and the people who need the assistance, they have no power. They have no access to the Internet. They have no 
you know, they have radio often. So again, radio remains the killer app, no matter how uh, not sexy it is, it's still the most important tool for a lot of communities and communities and disaster recovery. Um, with, uh, with working in SMS, what we often deal with is communities want to crowdsource SMS reports for people who need assistance. So someone text messages in perhaps that they're trapped in a building and they're dying and can you guarantee that you will deliver services back to them? And, and how, in what world do you, are you willing to take on those reports and not be able to liaise with the police or with the medical services and, and deliver assistance? To look at um, how we can actually create a platform or an environment to build resistant, resilience um, in anticipation, right, of the next potential need to be reactive um, in a recovery environment. So the idea of creating these kind of palimpsestual layers right, between one crisis to the other is to identify certain types of patterns from the data sets that emerge from doing the mapping across um, multiple media types, right? So the idea here is that, you know, if we can better track or map the reactive nature during a recovery environment, can we actually look at those data sets as a way to anticipate and build resilience through um, for the next crisis, right? Through fostering these partnerships, through a knowledge base that's around shared learning, and to identify some of these kind of almost, it's almost like a narrative arc, right? When we're talking about kind of post-crisis environments.